Lighting in film can be an extremely challenging process to learn and perfect. There are so many different variables including light angle, intensity, color, contrast ratios, and it can become really overwhelming to figure out what makes an image just look good. So today I want to share a trick with you that rapidly helps improve your lighting skills while also helping to simplify the process, and it involves practicing in black and white. And I know this idea sounds pretty dramatic, but just hear me out here. So recently I was out on a photo shoot and I switched my camera into black and white mode just to test it out. And I was astounded at how quickly the way I viewed the world around me changed. Basically I was seeing everything in much easier compositions, everything was coming together and I could really just see everything in light and shadow, which is essentially lighting. And yes, those shadows and highlights exist in color photography, but it's much easier to see them when in black and white because that's really all you're looking at, there's no colors to distract you. So to practice this in camera, I changed my camera's color profile to black and white and I set up a few practice scenes. With this exercise, there's no more worrying about white balance, color temperature, or color palette, at least for now. So I want to show you three example scenes, a day exterior, a day interior, and then a night exterior. So let's start with the day exterior. As you can see, I have a chair here and I just set up my camera with the sun facing the chair. And as you can see, this first angle doesn't look great. There's a lot of light, which may seem like what you want, but really you want to shape the light, not just abuse the light. So this shot right here just has way too much light going on. And because of that, it's not a very interesting shot. So what I did here was flip around the chair and the camera so now the back of the chair is facing the sun so now the subject is backlit. And now with the back to the sun you get this nice rim light around the body kind of acting as a hair light which just helps to accentuate the shape and give separation especially if you have a kind of dark shadowy background behind you. But now the issue obviously is that there's not enough light on the face because the sunlit source is behind you so we need to fix this. I went in and added a simple bounce to the scene on one side of the face just to add some more shape to the scene and light it better. And now as you can see this bounce is just giving a little hit of light to one side of the face adding to the shape of the scene. And I thought that I could shape this shot just a little bit more so I added a piece of negative fill on the opposite side of the bounce, basically subtracting a little bit of the light adding a bit of a higher contrast ratio and just making an overall more interesting shot. And I also composed the shot a little bit off center just to give it a bit of a shorted look when you look over towards the short side of the frame, it increases tension and kind of cool look. And here you have the finalized shot, super simple setup. And as you can see in black and white, it's much easier to just compose your shot and see what different lighting things are doing more clearly. You can just see what the contrast is doing since you're actually having a bit less dynamic range in this black and white mode. So little changes make more difference and you're really able to see that. And just for reference, yes, when you light in black and white and then you switch over to color, it usually ends up looking pretty good. And because this lighting is already set pretty well, if you just move in for a close-up or insert, it looks pretty good. Okay, so now I want to talk about this day interior. And as you can see here, one of the challenges with day interiors is you have to expose to the outside elements. And so that drops the interior exposure greatly, especially if you're seeing windows. So that's what I had to do here. And in black and white, you actually get, like I said, less dynamic range. And so this means you have to add significantly more light inside. And so this is the starting place. As you can see, it looks pretty cool. We have some silhouetting, but we need to add some lights to make this look more interesting and have more depth and separation. So first I added a spotted light close to the wall, simulating some sort of daylight source, and it really just helps to accentuate shadows on things. And as you can see on the wall, you just have so much more detail and interest in this shot because of this one small light source. So adding a sharp point of light really helps to accentuate things especially in black and white. Now most of the light in the scene is coming from this big bank of windows on the left, just natural daylight, it's super soft, but I wanted to add a little bit more at the stopping end point, so what I did was add a soft light mat just to add a little bit of a wrap around to the face on that final stopping point, and it really helped to create a more contrasty exposure with light on one side and then shadow on the other, so I think this helped a ton. And again, here's a look at the same shot, but in color, as you can see, it's not quite as interesting and contrasty, but you do still see the same elements of exposure and shadow working in place. And although the color palette might not be perfectly what you want, you can really see how you can fix that pretty easily once you start working with color. And again, yes, punching in for a close up with the same lighting setup looks great. All right, so now let's look at the night exterior. The first thing I try and find with any night exterior is a source of light that I can motivate things from because it's really hard to motivate light at night because there's not a whole lot of light. So I try to find a light source like this one right here and then set up a shot around it. 
So here's the shot with no additional lights, just this one practical, and as you can see it looks pretty cool, but there's definitely not enough light wrapping around the face, it's far too dark and very silhouetted, so we need to change that. So I went ahead and added a light mat, kind of at the same angle as the other light, but wrapping around just a little bit, so it adds light to the scene, still looking motivated. So now as you can see, when we add this additional light, it really just wraps around the face and still looks realistic enough like it could be coming from that practical we see. But now the issue is there's way too much black space in this frame, just areas with absolutely no detail, so we need to add some light to fill that in. And what I did was end up adding just a little tube light on a stand and I tried it in different positions, moving it around, trying to get the most realistic lighting look just to add a little bit of a hit on the front of the car so we could see that texture there. And as you can see, even though it's very subtle, adding that other little tube light just accentuates some reflections and just allows us to see the shape of the car adding separation and making it not just disappear into blackness. So that helps a lot. And after a couple more tweaks of lighting brightness, I came up with this shot and I think it looks pretty cool, just a diverse shot that is pretty motivated based on the existing light fixture. And here is the shot again in color. I tried to get a little bit more creative this time. I actually matched the color temperature of the light mat to the practical, so it was both that tungsten color and then that tube light, I set it a bit of a blue color to add some color contrast. And again, here are the lights I use. I use this light mat to wrap around the car. I have this tube light on a stand in the back, just filling in some of the reflections. And then inside the car, actually, I have a little LED panel adding just a bit of fill inside the car to accentuate the hair and things like that. So that's basically it. Super simple and turned out pretty neat. And again, this is one of those situations where having the shot in black and white just really makes it so much more clear what the contrast is doing and what the lights are actively doing to the scene. So a very useful strategy to learn lighting. But uh, that's all I really got for you today. I think everyone should go out and try this technique, at least for just a little bit for a few scenes, try and light a few things in black and white and see how it might change your perception of what lighting does. And I think it can be very useful for a lot of people. And once you figure out how the contrast works, how the exposure works, jump into color, get creative. And it can be a lot more fun to work with color and lighting once you're done worrying about the contrast levels and exposure and all those things that are easily looked at in black and white. So yeah, try it out. Let me know how it goes in the comments below and I will see you all next time.